Hi everybody, I uh, missed last week, so this week I'm going to try and get two videos up. I have been doing quite a lot of art journaling, as I mentioned in my last video, so I wanted to show you one of the techniques that I really enjoy doing, very simple, and has really effective results. I had posted a time lapse of the gel medium transfer that I did here on this snake and it was very well received uh, a lot of fun also time lapse so I wanted to explain this process and demonstrate that um, this spread this two-page spread was definitely about transformation um, I've put together some techniques there's direct collage there's gel medium transfer there's some stenciling I've drawn back into things um, I've done some drips and some splatters, and it was really just, uh, it evolved as I was working on it. I'm sorry if the angle is a little funny. I do have the, the camera in a tripod, and I'm trying to, you know, see what I'm doing through the lens. The, um, here's another piece that I worked on recently. And there's a gel medium transfer of a labyrinth here, and I actually left it kind of obscured. You'll see what I mean when I show you the process. I left some of the paper on it because I wanted it to be very faint in what was working as the full moon in this, this spread. This was a spread uh, inspired by, devoted to the goddess, the goddess Arian Rod from Welsh tradition, um, Arian Rod of the Silver Wheel. So let me show you how this technique works. I have this piece of collage started was just um, a day that I prepped some pages. This is 11 by 14 Bristol board. And as you can see, there's some gesso and there are some, some origami paper, some printed paper, some text in Italian. So just uh, preparing a surface so that it wouldn't be plain white. I'm not sure what this is going to turn out to be. I don't have any plans for it, but it may end up that this original layer is completely covered or it may be visible. It's just nice to have a base instead of staring at that white page. So for this sample piece, uh, this is a um, toner-based Xerox copy from the Copy Center, and I'm going to use it for my transfer. The transfer involves gel medium, and I've used Liquitex and Golden with good results each time. Um, I, I really like the Golden products, but I haven't seen a marked difference in either brand working better for this technique. What I'm going to be doing is putting a layer of the gloss gel medium on the image. It does not have to be everywhere on the paper because this is going to basically transfer the toner ink onto my collage piece. So I want to make sure that I have it everywhere. Yes, that number is going to transfer, whatever. I'll be able to cover that up when I do collage work. The layer should be not too thick that it's going to gush out when you put the paper down. But I am going to, I can kind of see through this, kind of line it up. I want it here. I'm going to lay it down and make contact in the middle and then try and get a nice even application pressed out from there. If there are wrinkles in the Xerox, there will be spots where the image does not transfer. So once that's stuck down, I want to brayer it with a good bit of pressure to really have it stick. Now, some people will do a transfer technique where they peel this off when it's just about dry. I've even heard of people speeding up the drying process with a heat gun. 
I prefer to just let it sit for 12 hours and come back to it another day. So for the sake of this video, I of course prepared one so that I can now show you the next step in the process. That's partially why the video didn't come out on Friday because I did this prep work on Friday and then over the weekend, you know, life happened. So I just didn't get back to it. I've done this transfer on a very fibery artist paper. Um, so that's a bit of an experiment. Let's, I hopefully that will come out really well since this process does involve getting the substrate wet. In the pieces that I showed you in my journal, there was some acrylic paint down and sometimes some gesso down or some gloss medium down collaging pieces on. So this image transfer went down onto a surface that already had some barrier between its wetness and the texture of the paper. Uh, so sometimes that helps a little bit because then it doesn't, the original page of the journal isn't so porous anymore. Now, for the sake of ease, I'm just going to peel off this extra where there was no image, where there was no transferring happen. I know what this image is, so that'll be a surprise to you as it starts to emerge. I have some water here. Sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes I work with a sponge, other times just my fingers, but I'm going to basically erode the paper fibers off, and that's going to leave the ink from the toner bonded with the original paper. So you can start to see that as the paper get, gets wet and it comes through. I'm holding the original paper taut. Oh, that's not working. Won't that be a great video if it doesn't come out? So this wet paper is kind of rolling up. There's a balance in how much pressure you want to apply. Enough pressure to roll the paper fibers off the piece. Too much pressure is going to remove the ink from the toner. I apologize if the video is shaky. It may just be the table shaking as I roll this paper away. Now for what I'm gonna do with this, places here where it did not transfer, that's fine because I can work that into, work this into a larger piece and do other collage elements over that to obscure where it didn't transfer. I think partially because this paper, this fibery paper had a lot of texture, a lot of organic matter in it, that I didn't get a smooth contact when I brayered the Xerox image down. So you can see, if you recognize her, this is uh, the Venus of Willendorf. one of the original goddess images from art history. I wish I'd thought to look her up. I mean, I have a good working relationship with her, but I can't quote you her age. Now when this dries, there's going to be a little cloudiness on the image where there is still paper film. 
I can leave that. I can work into that with paint, even watercolors to give it a tint because they'll soak into the paper fiber. I can go over it with a layer of gloss medium again to kind of make the fuzz a bit more transparent or translucent at least. At least. But sometimes it's nice to see the image a little obscured. You can see the fiber from the original art paper coming through there. So for right now, I'm going to leave that. With the exception of the parts that didn't transfer, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'll be able to work this into a collage piece at some point in time. I love this coming through the image, this, um, this fibery. organic matter in the original paper. So there she is. That's the Venus of Willendorf from a gel medium transfer. Like I said, it is a versatile technique that you can do inside a sketchbook as well as on a loose piece of paper. Um, this was a direct image. Um, this was an image transfer. Let's see, I've got another one here for you. This was a direct image of a figure, and this was an image transfer of yarrow plant that I put over her along her spine, and then I went back in with paint to highlight the flowers um, stenciled down here in the leaves. So it's nice when you know you want the details of the snake skins, but you can see the map through it. You can see this other paper through it. If I had the snake more over top of this dictionary page, then you'd even be able to see some of the text through it. So I think it's an exciting way to do some layering of images in collage and um, in the sketchbook, which has been really one of the places I've spent a lot of time during Corona times. So hopefully that um, was interesting to you, that little peek inside the sketchbook and one of my favorite transfer techniques. Let me know if you have any questions below and um, look for another video later this week. We'll see if I can pull that off. All right, thanks. As always, all my information is below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.